When I look at Luca and Rasmus, it's like having Ronaldo and Messi at the same team, you know, on the same team. Like, Luca is the guy that, he's talented, of course, but he like works really hard and like, you know, he takes everything so serious, you know, uh, when it comes into training and you know what I mean? It's more tryhard, you know, whereas Cavs is more like Messi, you know, or kind of Neymar, right? You know, he's super talented. He plays the game because he loves the game, not because he feels like he has to get better. He just loves the game so much, you know, he's just a happy guy. So they both together, it just works actually, because they realize that there's not a single path to success, you know? Basically, I was contacted in off-season by G2, which at first seemed like pretty weird, just because Burke's obviously like the middle and he was like in the face of G2. Starting. Over the, the years, he had also kind of like established himself as like a legendary mid laner and as one of the best, if not the best. But then I heard that he was actually going to roll swap to AD. And it was like, sounded pretty crazy. It was my idea, right? <laughs> I was talking to Carlos and I like, kind of just threw it out there. <laughs> I kind of just threw it out there that I could like, I, I, I could play AD. This role is really easy, I could for sure play that. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. So where are you headed to? <laughs> so I was like, you know, we started talking, you know, and advancing talks and he's like, there's only, there's only two players I would potentially change roles for. And you can imagine who those two players were. Those Caps and Faker. I mean, he was like my rival, right? He was my biggest competition. He was the only person I was looking to beat. Perch was obviously like the, the best mid laner and he was the biggest guy to take down. And my goal was always to take him down because I always want to be the best. I always want to be like that legendary mid laner. Here we go. The last hope of Europe sets foot onto the rift for their first game in this best of five. On European soil, at a European world. That's a lot of pressure going on at this lineup. Double connect. Knock him is there as well. TP now coming to the bot lane. They need to take down first. The first is flashed out. He's brought it back. And now they've been locked up. Barrel going to go down for first blood. Tom will commit everything and they get nothing. I had known Perks for a while just because I was talking with him every now and then. And obviously he was a mid laner, so I had a lot of respect for him in that sense. He was like the, the best mid laner I could compete against in Europe. And also I knew that mid lane role was a bit stacked, so if he went to the bot lane, he, I was sure he was going to have like a really good time. Uh, so I was confident in him. I think we should turn on a fight. Barrel into the midst of the entire team, and that's nuclear right to the backside. Perk wants to get something done, but this might just be the fight. Canyon goes golden, tries to buy a bit more time. Wonder going into the backside as well. He sees his opportunity. Caps still alive, but Canyon will he react? Made the feathers from downtown, and Perk might have just saved his mid laner's life. And in style, G2 will close out game one. He actually won the first game. <laughs> like, you always lose game one. It was like a challenge for me because. I thought it could be very, very hard, like mentally, but I also thought it could be very easy for me to adapt to the role. Even getting any other best AD carry or someone would maybe be worse than me playing Bolton. So the more I thought about it, the more I saw it as actually the best option possible. I feel like we were never in danger, any danger. And I feel like I wanted to put myself in more danger so we can actually force fights. It's so hard for somebody like Perks to give up the role he grew at the role he knows he's the best at, or he generally believes he's the best at, to his biggest competitor, you know? Like, the, 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 the guts required to do that is just, just so insane, you know? The guy really wants to win, and you gotta respect that. I mean, you really gotta respect that. It was, like, very strange to see me not being the guy who's leading my team to victory. Even though I actually thought I was doing my job really well, I was not the reason we were winning. I feel like in the past, it was like always, I was the reason we were winning. And that kind of like 
I guess, boosted my ego as well in a way, you know? And so the whole spotlight was kind of shifted because I'm not the main, the main carry or what I used to be, right? There was definitely uh, a time where I was thinking, I was thinking to myself like, do I want to be the carry or do I want to actually win? For me, having a healthy ego is having two voices. The voice that tells you you're the number one, nobody can beat you. And having the other voice that tells you you're, you're really bad. You're like, you, there's nothing, you've done nothing. You haven't won a single world championship. There's a guy that won three, you suck. And the other guy, come on, I actually won LEC, it's pretty good, you know? You know having these two voices fighting against each other all the time, that's for me, it's a healthy ego. And to me, Perks, he has the perfect amount of, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the number one. And at the same time, the, per the perfect amount of, you know, what if I change my role so that I can win more, you know? Like, he gives up that, you know, that, that marketability, everybody looking at the mid laner. Like, he becomes an 80 carry now, and he just kicks ass just as much. And I love that, you know? I think that's very unique. No more, more. Cap's gonna be delivered. Nogari now needs to run. He can't just look to knock the back of him. Try to burn Cap down before the fight even kicks off. Good ultimate from Mickey gonna knock up two. Perks now in the midst of the entire fight. That's isolated damage. Perks now fishing. Oh, he wants He's it. not afraid. Level 10 to level 10. The Kaisa is so oh, strong. Oh. The double kill will double down on that advantage. Go in, they go in. Perks going in though. He sees it. Blood in the water. He knows the opportunity is there. A nuclear. I, I'm just OP. Yeah, okay, guys. I'm OP. I know. I know. Nice. Like imagine you follow a sport, right? And you are a fan of a team. And there's always like somebody from some team that just keeps on destroying you, you know? That's how we felt about Caps, you know? And yeah, Luca did really well. Like Luca was really fat typically, but Caps would just move around, like get kills and like, all the lanes were behind because of that. It was so annoying, you know? It was so annoying. And now we have him. So we are the annoying ones. I'll take it. Body slams can't come in from Sadiankos. Can't get in trouble, but right into the waiting arms of Caps. Can dash through and find first blood. Then setting up another dive on the top lane. Caps is hungry for blood. No flash on Nogari. Lock him down, dashing through. Hail of Blades does a lot of damage. He's going to grab that one. Again, he is roaming. This man is, is a jungle, this game. He's got a mid lane. Caps is trying to dash through, getting his montage moment. We'll wait for the all. That's it. Dominant is coming in for G2. Caps gets a favorable matchup, and he makes his presence known. This game is honestly looking like it's it's over. I just think some of the things Caps does, no one else can do. And some of the things I do, no one else can do as well. So we complement each other very well. I'll, I'll jump the wave, I'll jump wave, I'll jump wave. No flash, guys, no flash, guys. Perks. Flashes in, lands the auto, clear in trouble. Tornado, he has to sidestep it, he has to sidestep it, but he won't give him the chance. Caps does not risk nice. anything. And as they move in and as they close the game, they will knock Don Juan Gaming out of the tournament, and G2 will move on to the semifinals for the MSI rematch versus SKT. It doesn't really matter if I have to be 0-5 every game to win and I can actually lead my team to victory in some way, some sort of way. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, winning is more important than being uh, the star or whatever you want to say. It. Yeah, I think Faker should be scared because Klaps is coming. Joining him, it kind of like ruined my plans in a way, uh, just because we were both two, two wins each you know, of like LEC splits after I joined. And I really wanted to, to win the battle against him in that sense and like win the, this last spring split against him. And while I may forfeit the battle to him like regionally, and now he may, my, might be like the best Western player, at the end of the day, I thought that joining together with him would be better, just because we have a much better chance of actually winning internationally. My thought process was like, like honestly, was really like, was really simple, was really blunt. Was like, 
Okay, so he's very skilled. I'm very skilled. I think together we can be very skilled and we can take our team to a bigger height. And I thought any other obstacle that could come is worth overcoming it just to have this bigger goal in mind, right? So we just wanted to win World Championship.